Yeah, all these pumpkins have been sitting on my front porch for the last month, and now it's time to take them in and get them ready to make pie. It's Thanksgiving week here in the States, and uh, it's kind of a big deal in our family. Jeremiah's family always grew up really celebrating Thanksgiving as like the main holiday that they really got together and did things. And uh, so it's a big deal to him. And it was, a, it was a big deal to me. I'm more of a Christmas girl myself, but like, um, it's become a very big deal in the life we've built together. Y'all look at this. You see all this green popping up? That's horseradish. Um, that's where we had horseradish in the raised beds that were out there. And it got really big and we like harvested it out and moved the beds. But that is where little bits of the roots went down so deep that when the beds were moved and everything was cleared out, it's actually coming up. And you guys warned me. You told me once you put a horseradish somewhere, you will always have it there. It is incredibly um, tough to get rid of because of how far reaching the roots will be. I'm not upset that it did that because I didn't save any bits of roots to plant anywhere else. Um, and so I'm actually letting those grow a little and then I'm gonna dig up some of those little plants, maybe put them in a pot for now and then figure out where I want a new place to be for horseradish. I had thought about just going and like sticking it off in some like far corner of the property in the woods or something like that. Um, you know, somewhere where it doesn't matter if it really spreads a lot. I've not done a lot of that. That's that's kind of a mindset thing that I'm having to, to change to. Going into more of like a food forest thinking with some of these perennial things that you can just like give them a space and plant them like even my asparagus beds I put right in the front of my garden uh, where I've you know I've heard a lot of people talk about like their grandparents farm they grew up on they had the asparagus was like back in the back 40 and you just went during a certain time of year and looked and see to see if it was ready whereas for us like we don't use all our property but we do maintain all our property so I don't really have a place it's like a forgotten place to go put things um, except for maybe we could put it along like this tree line over here. I don't know. Uh, kind of my thought process. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I am glad to have some little horseradish plants. Here's the materials and the location for Jeremiah's secret Christmas mission that he's building for the kids. The shark tank is what he, he, he told them because they're like, we figured it out. We know what you're building us. And he's like, yeah, it's a shark tank. I guess if you know. So then they tried to outsmart us because then they were like, well, we'll just pretend like we're really excited about having a shark tank. So they start doing research on the kind of sharks they're going to put in the tank. Now keep in mind, my children are very bright. They don't actually think that that's going to be an aerial shark tank, but they wanted to get us to break. So they start Googling and they come in and they're like, so we're thinking we're going to go with lemon sharks. <laughs> I'm looking at them and they're looking to see what I'm gonna do there. We're just watching like are you gonna bite? You know like are you gonna freak out because you don't want us to get disappointed that we're not gonna have lemon sharks? And I was like yeah no we already ordered a megalodon and they're like it's not a shark tank. Oh hello garden. You also check this out. I actually just left this. Here's a little gardening lesson for us. Kale. Looking lovely. Pretty blemish free. Uh, Napa cabbages down here. Again, looking pretty nice. Couple little tiny holes in here. You know, real food has holes on it, has dirt on it, has bugs on it sometimes. These are um, purple lady bok choys. Check that out. Um, so I noticed that this was happening and that these were getting absolutely decimated uh, by little caterpillars. They seem to have moved on now with the freeze, but um, I noticed that the these had a lot of activity on them, but I also noticed that the others didn't. So believe it or not, this is actually a method of pest control. Um, this is called a trap crop. Now, sometimes you are going to plant trap crops on purpose. Um, for instance, nasturtium is often planted as a trap crop because a lot of things that will feed on a summer garden will flock to nasturtium. And the idea is whenever you plant something that all the pests flock to, they, they favor it, you can have plant right next to it that is completely unfazed and that's benefit. Because though I did not get any purple lady bok choy, 
which is kind of a bummer. I'm going to have these really lovely kale plants, these really lovely Napa cabbages, all in the same space, uh, that there obviously were a lot of pests. And like I said, sometimes you're gonna do that on purpose. Sometimes it's not on purpose. Sometimes you come out and you just notice that you have a whole lot of pests on one thing and nothing on another. And for me, now I know this isn't the same for everybody, and I know if you have a really small space, you may be more prone to see, oh no, there's pests, and go get something to come spray on them and kill them um, even an organic solution but I actually prefer to spray nothing now I've done put out information before about like what to use for pest control and organic gardening uh, the off season is a good time to be thinking about these things sometimes you can get them on clearance at box stores as they're closing out their garden stuff um, or just go ahead and order them on the off season and have them prepared for the gardening season if you want to use that stuff but I actually prefer to use nothing when at all possible. I love the fact that I can come out and harvest a cabbage for my garden that's literally had nothing ever sprayed on it at all. So trap crops come in a lot for me because, um, you know, it's, it's truly very organic pest control because uh, I get food that's not riddled by pests without ever having to spray anything. All right, so one thing here I'm about to pull up one lone rutabaga. Check that out. Oh, it smells so good. Rutabagas have such a spicy, earthy smell. Um, I planted several rutabagas in this bed and um, didn't end up getting really great germination. And I think it was probably user error. I don't actually think it was my seed because this soil that we put in these beds just was drying out really quickly and the stuff that I planted from started plants has done better and also um, I planted these when it's still very hot outside and so the top of the soil I think was drying out too fast but I did get this one big old rutabaga which unfortunately isn't really enough to do a whole lot with when you have a family my size but I could mash it in with some um, carrots or some potatoes. That'll be really good. So I'm gonna set it over here and take it in. So back to the trap crops, just to finish this thought. This is a prime example of what I'm talking about when I tell you guys when you go into your garden to prepare to harvest wisdom. Because frankly, I have never seen anything, and it's not to say it's not out there, but I look at a lot of gardening stuff. I've never seen anybody say, grow purple bok choy as a trap crop for um, a cab cabbage moth or cabbage worm. I, I don't know, that's what I always call those, those little white butterflies that land on everything and, and have those little caterpillars that just can decimate a brassica. They, they typically go after cold weather stuff. And I've never seen that, but I'm remembering that in Arkansas, uh, one year during this time of year, I attempted to grow uh, bok choy and it ha I had the same result. And again, the purple bok choy was decimated while everything else looked really nice right next to it. And so now I'm storing the information. Next fall, I will purposefully grow bok choy, um, maybe in the other places also. Like I have some brassicas down on the other end I didn't grow any bok choy next to um, but next year I will I'll, I'll put a few of those plants anywhere where I'm trying to grow cabbages or brassicas because I know that they are going to attract and maintain the biggest pest that I deal with as a southern gardener trying to grow uh, coal crops so it's good information to have. Though this would be an incredibly puny harvest of bok choy, you know, obviously you would not even want to, to eat this. It's a pretty solid harvest of gardening information, don't you think? So a freeze came back. Oh my goodness, look at that ant pile. That's nuts. Probably get some diatomaceous earth out here on this and see if we can knock it down some. So the freeze came back thoroughly. And it's frozen like multiple nights this week and is going to continue to freeze. So this is actually more a normal time of year for that for here. Our, that freeze we got a month ago was really early, but it's okay. Here's such a great illustration. Oh, look, there's my little garden spider. Um, basil, <laughs> chamomile. When people are like, 
you know, what's the difference between a frost hardy plant and a frost tender plant? It's a, uh, it's this. <laughs> I actually think that right now, and I know some of you guys um, are not here. I know that some of you are down under where you're going into spring and you're, you're, you know, you're in the throes of the height of gardening season. But to those of you who are in the, uh, the off season, the season, the rest, even if you have a fall garden growing, a fall garden is very different than a summer garden. It really just does not require the same amount of time. You're not out there trellising up and pruning cabbages. You know, it's, it's all pretty hands-off stuff. And this really is a very important season and it took me a long time to validate that. It took me a long time to really learn that. I used to just die over the winter, you know, I'd just be so depressed and uh, bummed out over not having a garden and um, coming out and things looking like this. And while it does give me uh, some satisfaction to have some things that stay green, like this, lovely lettuce here and my green stalk is looking really nice there are some peas coming up i've got some herbs of course these stay stay good all year oh check this out it got cold enough in here to actually damage the stuff the banana trees are, are knocked back big time these papaya plants that wes brought me are definitely knocked back big time I knew the high tunnel couldn't keep things actually like from freezing, but this last freeze was enough to actually do something in here. Now here though is the important winter in the garden, the off season, the rest season. And I thoroughly believe this applies to a lot of things in life. Oh look, it's getting a little bigger. I'm watching this very closely. I come out and check it every day because I want it to get as big as possible, but I also don't want it to get, I don't want it to start flowering. So. Still got tight buds. Same for this one. Uh, might be getting kind of close. Again, I'm trying to find that spot that it's not going to, I'm not going to lose size, but I also don't want to lose quality. So the seasons when you have to wait for the fulfillment of what you really want, these restrictive seasons are, though they don't feel like it, one of the greatest blessings in your life if you wanna stick with something for the long haul. I wonder how many people who really fall in love with the garden and like commit to it for their life would do so if there were not these rest seasons. Um, because honestly, it drives so much passion to have to be restricted from having something for a season. It really just does. And I've shared so many times how badly I wanted a farm and a homestead for years that we just could not make it happen. The period of wanting it um, to the point that it hurt, like it was genuinely like I experienced like heart sickness because I wanted it so bad and it was impossible. Um, I, I still pull on that. There are times that I am overwhelmed and I am tired and the fulfillment of this dream is just a lot and I, there's, it just never occurs to me to quit, like, because I wanted it so bad for so long, and I finally got it, and when I think about that, like, whenever I feel overwhelmed, I'll think, oh, I remember those times that I, I cried over and over. I would cry at farmer's markets and bookstores, and I would just, it literally felt like this, this punching ache, like, somewhere in my middle, how badly I wanted this, and couldn't have it, and I still pull on that. It still fuels me when I need to push through something hard. So I really hoped we would have Brussels sprouts ready for Thanksgiving, but I don't think we're going to. The biggest ones are down here. Um, these are kind of getting there. And then down here where we have, I think these are the biggest ones, yeah. But I don't think they're going to be ready by Thursday. That would have made a very happy sweet Maya. So right now... While it's November, as the seed catalogs begin arriving to your home, as your garden is brown or covered in feet of snow, I would like to challenge you to be extremely intentional with this time. Be aware of how badly you miss your garden. Uh, talk about it, write it down. When you are making your lists of what you wanna grow, you know, really note how excited you are for that. And store up this season of restriction 
because it will serve you well when the hours are long when you don't want to go outside um, in the heat of the day when the weeds are growing over when your back hurts your stuff gets decimated by pests you'll be able to remember how badly you wanted it and the the, the pain and the desire uh, it truly is a case of absence makes the heart grow fonder um, this absence from the lush lovely garden and all its rewards it's an incredible gift it's an incredible tool but you have to be aware of it um, you could just kind of get busy and not think about it and then come back around and when the garden season comes go, go through the motions of doing that next but I don't know about you I don't ever want to just go through the motions of my life this this life is beautiful and it's a gift and I want to be fully present in it and so right now I'm walking through this garden every day and yes I'm thinking about what it will be um, I'm imagining the lushness I'm I'm dreaming of when this is full of arched trellises and lovely seating in the middle and very tall lush plants but I'm not gonna be impatient to get to that point today I am going to be thankful for this gray November day this lone rutabaga and the fact that right now my heart is growing ever fonder of the garden in her absence thank you guys for hanging out with me today I bless you until next time